Hello and welcome to the Listening Posts unboxing channel on YouTube. Today it is with great pride that I get the opportunity to share with you Macintosh's MC462 power amp. This brand new model, 450 watts a channel, is an absolute colossus. 450 watts really doesn't even touch its absolute performance. It will deliver four times the rated power before clipping and still maintain total harmonic distortion at an almost immeasurably low level. This is a stunning power amp. It is iconic in its time and with all of the build quality and audio quality of Magic Macintosh to back it up stunning and again so proud to share it. With these big power amplifiers they're really heavy. They're massive. The boxes of Macintosh power amps are like nothing else and these are held together with steel strapping. So the first thing we need to do before we can even get close to having a look at this product is get rid of the steel bands. I recommend you use the most simple of techniques, basically grab some metal cutters, get rid of them, carefully pulling the steel bands off to ensure that they don't hurt you or anything around it. And then that'll go in the recycling bin a bit later. Now the box itself is almost square, which means if it's just one person trying to lift this up, chances are it's going to talk and you're going to get annoyed with trying to lift it. So I'm going to get some help. Lifting easily with a little bit of assistance, you can keep it nice and square, and the box itself is easy enough to get rid of. It exposes a couple of things. The first being the elaborate nature of the packaging that is added to ensure that this product is brilliantly cared for in freight. You can imagine how heavy this product is and as it bounces around in any number of different places, it needs to be brilliantly protected and that's why it's got so much close cell foam. So the side panel, top panel, opposite side panel, and then two closed cell foam front and rears are designed to ensure that this product is brilliantly cared for in freight. I mean, look at that, it's got to be six, seven centimeters deep. Now at this point it's heavy and there's an inner box with no real glamour in it at all. Getting it off is never going to be easy, so I recommend just sort of rolling it. Getting rid of the last piece of closed cell foam and then as carefully as you can, kind of sliding it off the cardboard. Once it's off that box, it's pretty straightforward to discard the last of the inner packaging and concentrate on the power amp itself. Now it's monstrously heavy, so you can understand why I'm struggling. There's a simple enough lid and pulling that off is very, very straightforward. Looking at the top of the amplifier briefly, we see, as always, Macintosh's extremely comprehensive user manual. It's designed to answer any and all of the questions associated with the operation, connection, inputs and outputs, and most importantly, some of the key features associated with an amplifier of so much power and credibility. There's a, another piece of smaller closed cell phone that supports the top of the amplifier and ensures that it can't rattle or chatter in freight. Lifting it forward, just briefly, we have a look at some of the accessories and of course the scale of the amplifier itself. It's absolutely staggering as far as its physics, its weight and its size. Central, at the back, we have a long good quality IEC power cord. 
and interestingly, two protective covers to ensure if you are using bare wires uh, that the back of the amplifier can be um, isolated to ensure that those cables can pass through nicely and not lose, um, lose any sort of tension or connectivity long term. In one of these, we see Macintosh's now iconic uh, little plastic tool. Now it's perfect as far as a keychain, but branded Macintosh it has uh, two important purposes. It can be used on this side to uh, remove the bolts that we're going to see next in its packaging, but also on this side to help tighten the binding posts. It's a nice little freebie, and it's in there. Uh, look again, charming little accessory. At this point, by folding open the box, you reveal the next layer of protection that they've added, and that's the chipboard base. The amplifier itself is physically bolted to the base to assure again within its packaging it can't move. Moving it at this point is quite difficult, but relatively straightforward if you take your time. The important part is a two process where you sort of twist, roll and rock it off the packaging so that you can get rid of the box and reveal the chipboard base. Rolling it on to its top is the most logical next step. And although you could use the, the uh, keychain that it provides, the easiest at this point is to grab a drill with a suitable size chuck and take these huge bolts that are securing the unit off. There's a big washer to secure it, and again highlights the effort that Macintosh has made, ensuring that everything arrives to you in perfect condition. Looking briefly at it, you'll also see that there's a front uh, chafing um, to ensure that it sits brilliantly at the front of the unit itself. Now again, careful to manoeuvre the product because of its weight. We spin it around and firstly see the oversized bag that's taped in place. And opening that is very, very straightforward. There's a couple of pieces of sellotape that can easily be removed and discarded. Again, because of its weight, we have to be very careful at this point because the bag itself needs to kind of be gently rocked off. And the process on lightweight products, we can just grab in and rip things off, is really, really easy. But with an oversized bag, it can be difficult. The process, you sort of do it halfway, then manoeuvre the amplifier around, rolling it onto the opposite side to enable you to be able to get rid of the last of the bag. Now, before we look at the amplifier, it's worthwhile mentioning that there is a desiccant bag attached to the front on one of the handles. It's relatively straightforward to remove that. I'm just going to give it a simple nick, and away it goes. Again, before we look at the front and back, I want to pause. I want you to look at just how beautiful this product is. The heat sinks feature Macintosh logos, and because this is a quad balanced design, you will see duplications of all of these heat sinks. The process with these very large amplifiers is relatively simple, but so difficult to do well. Each channel, its signal is amplified for the both positive and negative, giving the ability to double its positive wattage before clipping and negative of its sine wave before clipping, giving you four times the rated wattage. So this 450 watt amplifier, you do the maths at what it will deliver control-wise. That's on top of the fact that this new model now features 65 or 66 percent more dynamic headroom than the previous model. It's staggering and wonderful to have this type of product here. 
So, looking at the amplifier, and again, this is very heavy. The first thing is, we see Macintosh's iconic VU meters. These are illuminated, and please hang around with fo for our photographs. We'll um, take some close-ups. You'll see this in operation. Um, they're, fiber, they're illuminated with fiber optics. Um, the uh, VU meters dance away nicely to indicate the power to being delivered to the speakers, and the classic two-channel approach is iconic nowadays. It has large handles, as you would expect, and if we look at it for a moment, we've got a simple enough uh, knob on one side associated with um, how we deal with these illuminations. You can turn the lights off. Once on, you can deliver the wattage. We'll put it in a hold. That hold enables it to slow down the beating of the VU meter, so it's not so hypnotic. Central, we have in the middle, it's model MC462, uh, quad balanced, Macintosh's logo, and a simple enough power standby light. You also see above that a left and a right power guard. Now when you're delivering this amount of current and this amount of wattage, you need to be able to control that. And that's where this amplifier um, has some unique real-time ability to control exactly that. The power guard enables it to monitor and detect shorts or loading that it's not happy with and immediately take charge and immediately take control, ensuring that no disaster will happen either to the amplifier or the speakers it is connected to. Obviously we have a second VU meter and then beneath it the main power switch. There's off, remote, which is how it is triggered on and off by the 12 volt at the rear, and a traditional on or always on position. There's a beautiful fit and finish in all of these knobs and dials as you would expect. It's worth mentioning the front handles, which are obviously required for anything of this weight and build. Again, rocking it forward, I want you to have a look at how beautiful this is from a manufacturing quality standpoint. Every element of it has been thought out and there's no marks or scratches on any of the screws or any of the fixtures. We see at the front and um, uh, measurements associated with the total harmonic distortion, power usage and power rating, as well as uh, any number of different little things associated with its inputs and outputs. Behind that we see the basic circuit design associated with the output transformer associated with, associated with this channel, emulated on the other side, as well as the main input power transformer. Across the middle are its inputs, and then the Macintosh uh, heat sinks that we've referred to earlier. Spinning it around, you see its depth. And again, beautifully made, with its auto-former output transformers raised above the main chassis beneath. Beautiful as far as its polish and quality, and it looks absolutely stunning in, from any angle and in every way. Looking at the back, there's a couple of things to note. Firstly, Macintosh's iconic multi-tap output. To maximise that 450 watts into the two, four or eight ohm loads that are capable of driving, um, it has separate binding posts associated with those. The 2, 4 and 6 ohm um, have individual uh, binding posts that can easily accept spades, bare wire or, once you remove the protective cap, a banana plug as well. In the middle is the boring bit which is the power along with the fuse. And again, an emulation of the left channel outputs again in 2, 4 and 8 ohm loads. In the centre there is a couple of small switches, and this enables you to switch between balanced and unbalanced or RCA inputs, which are above, as well as the ability to turn on and off an auto detect or a power save sort of device, where it will go into standby should it detect no signal input for a prolonged period of time. There is a couple of um, input for control for 12 volt triggers, and a cascade of two outputs to ena enable it to be part of something much bigger, if required. 
Above it, you'll see something relatively unique. It not only has at the top right and left balanced inputs and beneath it a set of RCAs, but you'll also see outputs. It gives this amplifier a key feature and a huge advantage over anything else in its class. It has the capabilities of becoming a bi-amped mono amplifier for a single channel. The single input can then be cascaded out and back into the channel again, giving you the ability to use this from a single output of a preamp into the dual outputs for bi-amplification, delivering a colossal amount of current and control to any hard-to-manage speaker. And that feature alone delivers this as a pinnacle of engineering. So, as we look at it again, we've got its outputs, we've got its inputs, RCA and balance. The balance circuit is completely separate. We'll tilt it forward again to recognise the build quality and depth and the colossal weight involved. And then spin it around to have a final look at this beautiful piece of craftsmanship. Macintosh's 450 watt two channel power amp, the MC462, unboxed here at the Listening Post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel. <laughs>